Miss Nelson Riley is here tonight also. What do you got here? I, I've Look. forgotten. I really just wanted to mention this as a favor to the people. It's a little book called Hope for the Flowers about butterflies. Somebody gave it to me a year ago, and I dug it out after my experience with the butterfly. Yeah. If you see it in the bookstore, buy it. I don't know who publishes it or anything, but it's just wonderful. Good. Thank you. Charles Nelson and Riley are all here tonight. Uh, yeah. uh, I, he's a funny man, most talented he's guy. And he's, he's directing now. He's a production of La Boheme, starting uh, Roberta Peters uh, in Providence on January the 10th, and he leaves for New York soon to begin work with Julie Harris in the Broadway play The Bell of Amherst. Would you welcome Charles Nelson and Riley? <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy, happy. happy. You're year. dressed. See, you, you came Well, forward. I'm not really dressed. I had, didn't have it cleaned. Oh, I see. Since the last time. You know, and I feel like it's not really... You know what I mean? But it's okay. Are you going to party tonight? Today? You were going to have like a dinner party. Well, that's nice. You could you know, just a family, the group. I wasn't asked. Yeah. No, but you're Johnny. going to Biggie. You're going to a big one. No? Well, Do you do the cooking yourself at this? Because I understand you're into... Yeah, I love to cook. Fine. I cook Christmas Eve. Cooked a good, good supper. Oh. Happy New Year and thanks for everything. Well, you know what I mean? And healthy, happy New Year to everybody. You know? Why not, huh? I spent the whole day with my doctors and the hair man, the teeth man. Really? Got the new glasses. I'm ready for another year. <laughs> well, no, it's true. I went all day. I, I have a show. For, mile checkup, I have right? a chauffeur to do all I have to do because what? you can't depart. You know, I, and I'm going to New York, so I had to get it all done. One must have a chauffeur. Well, just for the, for the day when they glue everything together for the New Year. Yes, yes. You know, and I went to one the dentist, and I said, now, is it permanent? I said, well, sure. Jail, oh, the whole thing. Oh, I didn't know that. A woman coughed in the balcony. You know, everything could come off. <laughs> but it's, you know, now it's terrific. It's a reissued, you know. Even took the car in this morning. <laughs> took, the car, took the car in, left the car. That's why I have a chauffeur. Gotten and went all day. Now I'm ready again for a new year. So you're complete human Completely. being Completely. Doctor said perfect. Uh -huh. <laughs> everything is perfect. That music was beautiful. Stephen, wonderful. <laughs> Lovely. So I'm Steve, fine. Stephen? Well, just jokes. You know, oh, I the see. set is beautiful. They look wonderful. Yes, they do. Beautiful. It's a man do. Yes, they everything. do. In that set. Uh, Bumblebee wanted to talk to you. <laughs> he's, on the, he's on your answering service. Yes, by the sweetest thing. When he buzzed uh, twice, hang yes. up. Uh, yes. He's got to like, leave, though. He's got a party to go to. I thought that was a charming thing. Have you ever oh, had yes. an experience like that? It is almost a religious type of an experience. No, it's true, though. My friends that, that live in Connecticut, I have two wonderful friends. Thank you. I wonder if it was for the hair, the eyes, or the teeth. Well, it may be. Well, it might be for your car. <laughs> I love you. What? No, but the, these two ladies have two farms in Avon, you know? And one feeds chipmunks. And one feeds... No, not the chipmunks, you see. The same kind of houses separated by two, three hundred yards. One and they feeds feed the, the chipmunks and one One loves the chipmunks, here's your chipmunk food. And the other one doesn't like the chipmunks because ah. they eat the, the bulbs and the seeds. Oh, I see. And they'll feed the squirrels and the birds. So the one that doesn't like the chipmunks plants in a certain order all the bulbs in the fall. Mm -hmm. The one that loves the chipmunks doesn't plant bulbs. So during the winter, true, the chipmunks dig up the bulbs, carry them over to the other yard. And replant them. And replant them in exactly the same formation. Tell that to your butterfly. <laughs> no, but I mean, these are stories. I mean, you know, it's very, it's true. Well, animals, they say, have, you know, have an certain oh, it's intelligence there. Uh, I'm going to direct a thing. I have a funny story to tell you about. Uh, to being a director is hard. I would Because you're the director. <laughs> you know, and they come to you and they say, uh, do you want two doors or one? And you go, well, oh, it's me. Well, I guess I'll go with the two doors. Two, two doors. doors. sweet. Big and, you know, you're the one that has to decide what color socks. You know, you always want to look around for Harry. Harry uh, oh, then you're the director. And but, you're going to direct Julie Harris? Yes, we worked on it for eight years. I think we're ready. Eight years? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Those projects, you know, it takes a long time. You know, you're writing a book. We're going to work on that. It takes a while, but eight years we worked on are it. You, you're a good director, I hear. I'm a wonderful director. I love to direct. I direct at home. Like, don't put that there. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those. You oh, know I what see. I mean? Neat. Everything has to be. No, it's, I'm a mess. But I'm always telling everybody what to do. There are too many red balloons. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you get tired of that. But that's what's wrong. I figured I'll do it, I'll get paid for it. That's Instead good. of saying that's the wrong saucer. But I directed one play once, uh, it was very funny. And what you learn about when you direct a play is that the set designer only looks at the set. 
costume. The costume designer only looks at the clothes, and the light guy looks at the light. It's fine. And I have to look at the acting, because without the acting and the life, there's no play. You know what I mean? There's nothing. I don't want to see a pretty thing. You know, that's something else. I want to have a little a life that the audience can relate and maybe learn something from. So I'm, I'm in the balcony, and the leading lady, who was a celebrated actress, who, uh, was very drunk. This was in the previews. Mm -hmm. And we had done the play out of town. It was a triumph, and now everything was changed, because it was New York. You know, you get ready for the big city, New York. So she was a little drunk, and the producer was sitting with me in the balcony during the previews. And she said, oh, those diet pills are causing her to make such strange moves. I said, they're not diet pills. They're in a very big bottle with a red label. <laughs> and so the lighting guy, as I'm watching this horrible scene in the second act, the lighting man comes behind me, who's now a very famous lighting man, the most famous, whispers in my ear, Mr. Riley, the light coming through the window will not be like that on opening night. I said, I, David, I don't really care about the light coming through the window. And watch the scene, then the next night he comes to the next preview. The light coming through the window will not be... I said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, finally, in, in this play, which was no coward, they're always lighting cigarettes. You know what I mean? You're constantly smoking cigarettes, darling, and it's much the cigarettes. And she has this big dress on like a parachute, and it catches on fire. Oh. Now, I'm not talking like... You smell something burning, like... You mean fire, I'm fire. your basic flash. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll show you fire. Right. I mean. So I'm in the balcony, and there she's on fire. And as she's burning, and the audience is screaming, he comes to me and says, Mr. Riley, really the light coming through the window. <laughs> I said, David, it doesn't matter. The leading lady is on fire. <laughs> and who cares? But it's true. <laughs> It's true. Why, well, Kumia hosed her down quickly, and now she was oh, all right. Oh, she was fine. They, uh, nothing ever happens. You know that. It happens, but it doesn't happen. Right. Yeah. You know? Like in God's Favorite, the last play I was in, this huge rock fell right in the middle of the scene. We had rocks in the second act, right. and they're stored in the first act because there's no room backstage. You know, it's not like a movie where there's a lot of room backstage. You, you come off the stage, good night, Philip. Oh. <laughs> and you have to go down the hall. Like that, you know, I mean, it's Broadway. You know. Good night, oh, sir. Well. So they stored the rocks. Butterflies are free is my favorite play. Yeah. <laughs> so a rock fell down. So the rock fell down, but no one was hurt. But these things happen all the time. That's but what it'll makes, be all right. That makes what makes theater what it is. <laughs> it'll be a smash. It'll be fun. Yes, do, you know, yes. do you know the word that they have in the theater for making do when something goes wrong? It's oh. called swallowing the saw. F swallowing swallowing, swallowing saw? the file. The file. Swall swallowing the file is what you do when something goes wrong. And it came from a play that was originally produced, uh, a, a prison melodrama, where the guy is ready to escape because his mother has baked a, a cake with a file in it. And he gets the file out and is just about to, uh, to make his escape by sawing through the bars, and he has a gun and everything. And one of the prisoners passes down the word and says, Run through, your mother is dead. And the guy says, Oh! And he picks up the gun and is going to shoot himself, and that's the end of the melodrama, that's the end of the play. And the gun goes click, and it doesn't work. And they have a standby gun with the stage manager off stage, and off stage he hears click, and that sound don't happen. How is he going to kill himself? And the curtain is waiting to come down, and he picks up the file, and he says, I'll swallow the file. And he's gone like this, and the curtain's rolling. I'll uh, swallow the file. Why not? Yeah. Another parcel of showbiz mania <laughs> behind the scenes. We'll take a break, and we're coming right back. things happen well you're... opera i'm going to direct an opera is funny you know because you never know what happens in opera you have no time to really direct it you have to do it very fast you have two or three hours and then it's a run through of an act but it, everyone is very talented in opera and you just tell them and they do it right away but i saw an opera was a debut you know debuts you wait for the new, new tenor comes from italy and this is a true story uh, aida was the opera in city center and in the very beginning of aida the tenor comes out Radames. And Rodimus is the leading tenor, the, the hero. It would be like Vic Mature if they had it in the movie. You know what I mean? <coughs> Big guy. Yeah, Clint Eastwood. That's right. your, your Rodimus. And we're sitting in the orchestra, and Gloria Lane played the mezzo part of uh, <laughs> Omneris. These names are hysterical. And so 
The tenor comes out right at the top of the opera. There's no overture in Aida. The curtain goes up, and out comes this hero. And he was this short. <laughs> Shorter than Myron Silverbaum. <laughs> and he's the leader. And he has on, as they have an opera, the, the platform shoes red, this big, with the laces going up like this, because he's the leader. And then you sit there, you go, ooh, mm, the whole audience goes. And even with the shoes, he was that short. Still short, but those shoes are like this with the laces up and the cape, you know? <laughs> and the whole audience goes, mm, you know? <laughs> because, and then he opens his mouth. You figure, gotta be fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> and everyone gets ready for his first phrase, which is, Equo Godierio Fosse. I mean, if anyone cares for the new year. Well, I so, and you realize not only is he a dog to look at, <laughs> and this is a New York debut, cannot sing at all. <laughs> then uh, the uh, uh, the uh, Maris, the mezzo, is, uh, has a hat on like Nephrodite. You know those hats that go way back? And you know in a play, you must try on your costumes first. See how it works. And I always go, oh, that'll be fine. You never try it with the clothes. Right. Try that with the clothes. Right. So what happens is they get to a part where he has to kneel in the second act to get the, the uh, hero's wreath. And she's got to put the hero's wreath on him. Now, probably he got there that afternoon from Italy in the plane, right? right? First time in the shoes, and she's got the hat. So she has to have the hat like this, because it goes way back like this, and she has the wreath. And the cue is coming in the music. Then it comes time for him to kneel. Now, he can't kneel, because he can't get it back. The shoes are so big. So finally, he gets down, and he's two feet from the ground. And she's five feet above him with the wreath, then on her face. It's, oh, why didn't we try this with the shoes and the hat earlier today? She's done for. So what she did is she just, what the hell, tossed, ring tossed. Time. What can you do? She just went, whoa. And it landed on his head like this, and the problem was he turned right to the audience. <laughs> and it was just disaster. He went back to Italy. I think the opera was over 10 after 11. <laughs> we took the red eye. <laughs> the red eye in Italy. Got the red eye in Italy. But you must always try with the clothes. Yo, remember that, folks uh, out there in the theater. We'll be right back. <laughs> try it with the clothes. The red eye in Italy.